Hey guys, it's Ms. Hadley here. Um, I just wanted to make you guys a quick video as you work your way through week six and entering week seven. Week six starts with module three, lesson one for language arts. And so I just wanted to create you guys a short video that you can watch as you work your way through those beginning lessons. So this lesson introduces um, similes and metaphors. Um, which are types of figurative language. So um, the definition of a simile is a word or phrase that compares to something else. It typically uses words like like or as. Some examples of similes would be to say, I ate like a pig. Um, you may also say something like, I slept like a baby last night. Some examples um, of metaphors would be to say something like the classroom was a zoo and what that means is just the classroom was noisy maybe kids were kind of just being just a little wild just a little rowdy um things like that so we use similes and metaphors for many different reasons some of the reasons we may use similes and metaphors when writing or talking is for comparison we may also use them for emphasis or for stress of a given subject. We may also use them for humor. Similes and metaphors are also used to make something clear or easy to understand, um, give somebody something to relate to. All right, so um, I will also, everything that I just mentioned will be presented to you guys in a Word document that um, will be available at the same time this video is. So if I said something and you didn't quite understand me, that's okay. I will have a Word document that you guys can put in a notebook, write down, take a picture of, do whatever it is you need to do. So here is module three, lesson one. Here's how it starts. As you can see, we have 11 slides. So we're just gonna, once again, be uh, with Carolina and Genevieve as they go exploring some new places. Uh, one of the things they um, will discover is um, different types of masks. Um, I think they're in New Orleans, yes. So they're just talking about some of the different things they see in New Orleans. So you can just click through those different pictures. Okay, uh, once again, you're gonna be asked to use context clues and your context clues toolbox is right there. Okay. So right here, you'll be asked to use your context clues toolbox to help you find the, the meaning of words gumbo and bayou. On slide three, you'll be asked to learn about idioms. And then I'll just show you the definition of an idiom. It's a commonly used non-literal phrase or expression. So here are some examples of idioms. Uh-oh, I went too fast. And then like I mentioned in the, um, like I mentioned earlier, um, similes and metaphors are examples of non-literal or figurative language. So if you click on similes, metaphors, non-literal or figurative, you'll get those definitions. So since I already gave you the definition of similes and metaphors, we'll click on non-literal and see what that means. So it just means words or phrases that do not mean their exact dictionary definitions, expressions used in an exaggerated or creative way. So that's the definition of non-literal. Definition of figurative is a word or phrase that goes beyond its literal meaning to create an effect in a text. So as always, highlighted words like this are usually important and you may see them on a quiz or an assessment. So I would click on it, write that definition down in my notebook or take a picture of it, something so that you have when you have an upcoming test or assessment. And on here, it just kind of gives us a more detailed definition of figurative and literal language. So we know what figurative language means. Let's see what literal language means. 
and it means words that are used for their dictionary meaning. So then uh, right here, it just gives us some different types of examples of similes or metaphors, which I also did at the beginning of this video. So if you guys wanted to click here to see what they have in common or click to what they, let's see what's the difference between them, you can do that. And then just make sure that you do all of the reading. And by the end of this, you should be able to um, tell the difference between a simile and a metaphor. Okay, so on slide five, it asks you to interpret similes and metaphors. So once again, you're gonna use your context clues toolbox. And you have a little self check thing here that you can kind of click through and uh, match each figurative phrase to its meaning. So I won't do that. Uh, that's just something that you can do on your own as practice. Slide six is all about coordinating conjunctions. So we'll just read what a coordinating conjunction is. Um, and it just talks about different ways that we can create longer sentences. And one way we can do that is to join two short sentences together. To do that, we need to use a comma and a coordinating conjunction. So let's see what a coordinating conjunction is. Coordinating conjunctions are words that join other words, phrases, and sentences together. And then it gives you some examples of a coordinating conjunction. So words like for, and, but, or, yet, so. So if you wanted to practice, you could click right there and it'll give you an um, example. You will also be asked to watch this video with some different um, examples of coordinating conjunctions. Slide seven uh, introduces you to opinion writing or fact writing. Um, so opinion writing um, is it's how you feel about something, how you think or feel about something. So it's not um, based on any type of research or factual information. It's just strictly about how you feel. So you you consider the you consider the facts and then you decide. Um, and so facts are information that's true. So that's the difference between fact and opinion. So like, for example, we will all have different opinions on something and it's just based on how we read and interpret information for our own understanding. That's how we determine our opinions. All right, slide eight once again tells us about the writing process, which we were introduced to in the last module. So it has six steps. Sometimes you'll see it only has five steps, depends on uh, who's talking about it. So sometimes steps one and two are combined and sometimes they're separated, but five or six steps is generally um, the writing process. Okay. So this would just be ask you to do a little bit of thinking, do a little bit of writing. I don't think this is anything that you'll turn in, but it is a uh, useful practice and then on slide nine you have your exit card so once again just some more writing practice if you wanted to do it and then slide 10 is your lesson summary so what you learned so we learned about similes and metaphors we learned about conjunction um coordinating or coordinating conjunctions. I think I may have had that confused. And then it just asks you to do a little self-check review, just to kind of uh, make sure that you understand what it is that you read. So now we're gonna go to slide 11, where this will tell us what our assignment is. So at the end of this module, you guys will be asked to complete a quiz and your quiz is available um, back in the classroom. So. If you have any questions or comments or concerns about how to um, be able to tell the difference between similes and metaphors, let me know. But once again, this video, as long as a document that you guys can use um, as you take your quiz, as you do writing, as you take an assessment that you have coming up, 
uh, will be available to you at the same time this video is. So if you have any questions, um, I'll be on Hangouts as always. Just uh, let me know and I'll do my best to help you out. Bye guys.